Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for Red Hat Summit 2023. Also Ansible Fest happening now with Red Hat Summit. I'm John Furrow, with Paul Gillen, breaking down all the action. Paul got a great guest here coming in to bring, talk about Intel and Red Hat working together. Christine Bowles, VP of Network Edge Group and the General Manager of Federal Industrial Solutions at Intel. Yes. Welcome, welcome to theCUBE, big title there. I got two things going on. <laughs> yes, it is, it is. And thanks for having me here great. today. Daryl Jordan Smith, Cube alumni, Senior Vice President of Industries and Edge for Red Hat. Obviously Edge, Intel, we're seeing where this is going. Um, let's get into, what's your role at Intel? Take a minute to explain what you do. Sure, I like to say I have the best job at Intel. <laughs> um, having the opportunity to work with some of the best people, partners in a transforming industry. And specifically, we can have the opportunity to, how do we apply Intel's products and technologies in the areas of aerospace, smart facilities, the manufacturing utility space, and what are those, those technologies that are really going to transform and digitally transform operations in critical infrastructure yeah. that we have around yeah. the globe. And it also gives me an opportunity to work with partners like Red Hat as this, this world is moving to more software defined and ultimately on the path to autonomy. Darrell, what's your role at Red Hat and what's the relationship with Intel like? Well, I think Christine did a great job of stealing my thunder as well. <laughs> um, she, she's a fantastic partner uh, in what we do here at Red Hat. And my role at Red Hat is really focus on the industries that we uh, engage with at Red Hat, particularly around telecommunications, industrial sector, automotive, healthcare, and uh, financial services, yeah. to say name but the least. You know, industrial IoT, we've been writing that, Paul, for like now, I could say six, seven years around the opportunity, but also the challenges, national security to all kinds of critical infrastructure, to just business. And it's a huge opportunity because it's the convergence of the two worlds, OT and IT, which we've been saying is going to be colliding for how many years? Has that happened? Is it happening? It is <laughs> happening, and it has to happen. I mean, the, 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 real, the real need comes from this infrastructure is, is is limited in what it can service. It needs to be more agile, it needs to be more flexible. And what do you have? For, you have that in IT. How, if you bring the IT infrastructure into the OT world, it allows for that flexibility to happen and that transformation to happen. And then it allows for new functions like artificial intelligence and that intelligence at the edge to happen. I want to so. follow up on that because we were talking before we started the cameras, we were talking about what's happening in semiconductor uh, manufacturing and the the intelligence, the role of AI, and really you're out on the leading edge in that area. What are you doing in semiconductors now that other industries can look forward to in their factory floor environments? Yes, so you know, with, with the intelligence that you have in semiconductors uh, manufacturing that you need for the geometries we deal with, you have to feed forward information, you got to feed back information to adjust the processes. A lot of manufacturing doesn't have that today, and you need that kind of intelligence, and you need the ability to deploy that and and manage those kind of operations at that level. So as the, as the infrastructure of that ITOT conversions happens, it allows for that flexibility and that ability to bring those kind of workloads in and bring that kind of adjustment. What's the edge like these days? I mean, obviously we always talk about the edge and industrial edge, really manufacturing and other things. Telecommunications, you know, Mobile World Congress, we were talking about the impact of cloud and hybrid operations. It's just distributed computing is what we're seeing now. Is this is the world, which is great, we all love that. Yeah, public cloud, on-premise, and edge. You can have a data center the size of a couple boxes out there. This yeah. is the new footprint. Well, there's, there's many different definitions around edge. You know, from a core data center, it could arguably be in a country like Japan, long thing country, at the edge, by definition, it's very close to everything and around it, all the way out to very large geographic regions where you might have uh, technology that's interconnected in a very thin layer back into the mm -hmm. core network and function. But the key thing is what you just said, is it is hybrid. It is absolutely hybrid. It runs across multiple hybrid cloud infrastructures, on-prem, off-prem, uh, through the mobile edge computer arena, back through the network into the core data centers. Would you say that edge is misunderstood or just too many definitions? I think there's lots of definitions. I think that uh, people throw out edge and, and it can mean lots of different things. I mean, it could be a phone, it could be a car, it could be a data center. I think of U2 when I hear the edge. Yeah, <laughs> <there's>, absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're a great album. <laughs> what, uh, a question for both of you. What's an example of what you see a customer doing at the edge right now that really excites you? Do you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. I mean, there's so many things that really excite me. 
the, 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 one of the key things I've seen more recently is in the United Kingdom where British Rail are using computer vision to not just safely monitor what's happening over a platform at the edge, i.e. if someone falls down they might be hurt and dispatch someone to help them through to security, through to just tracking trains leaving and, and arriving on time. There's a lot of economic uh, benefits from them actually doing that, ensuring the train station is safe and flowing properly. That's just one very simple application. Smart video. Absolutely. Video. And, and what we're doing in Narita in Japan Japan from curbside all the way through to the aircraft, not necessarily having to check anything, go through security because facial recognition allows you to flow all the way into the into the aircraft, all happening at the edge. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah. it's good. phenomenal. <laughs> you don't want to be on those lines. <laughs> What's the bleeding edge? Go ahead. It is, yeah. and those those examples is really about that AI at the edge. You can't bring everything up. You got to be. You need to process it and and act on it local. I, I think one of the things that we are doing together, and it, it comes out of the industry, and this has been a journey. Some, some of these things in the industrial space has to be a journey. And we've been on this journey for about six, seven years with the open group and the open process automation forum that is redefining what process automation is. And, and think of moving, you know, what happened in the telecom industry and becoming more software defined. The same thing is now through this, this standards is how do you do this more in the process automation space? And what we're demonstrating here at the Red Hat at Summit, um, in the Red Hat booth on the edge, is an instantiation of that. Sitting on the Red Hat, a, a process automation, managing an overall workflow, uh, an overall automation system. And to think about where we have been with more closed systems to now more open systems, utilizing the assets we have from the IT industry, from the telco industry, for me, this is, this is game changing of how we're going to ultimately be man managing can, operations. Can you expand on that? Because sure. Because this also makes me think about the trend around um, it, 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 hardware's back, then we're talking about hardware again. It's like, don't talk about hardware, we're not speeds and fees, we're, we're not a box player. But everybody's got silicon, they got the, the con software convergence of chips, and everyone is in the software business, it's on hardware, so yes. that distinction of getting that level of performance at that core physical layer is yes. the physics problem. It, you guys know that well. Um, where that's software now. So now you got open source, and you look at some of the AI conversations where you're trying to squeeze as much software power out of the silicon, everyone's going to the network and to the chips. Yeah. That's pretty much an edge kind of dynamic. Yeah. What's, what is that all about? How do you guys react to that? Because this is kind of unpacking that a little bit here. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, ultimately, it is the hardware and the software interacting. You need the optimization, you need the acceleration in your, in your in your chips, in your processors, that can can ultimately perform the software functions. And so we've been actually putting additional functions, whether it's for network workloads, whether it's industrial features to go into the industrial infrastructure to handle real-time operations, or whether it's AI inferencing functions to make yeah. it easier. And then Red Hat and can utilize those functions and optimize their software on that. And of course, we work a lot in the open source community to make it happen. There was a leaked memo by Google a couple weeks ago that opened up the kimono, if you will, on essentially how open source got some leaked meta AI code. There's been AI, open AI was donated and the open source community ran with it. So if, if you're software defined and the software business is now open source, yeah. which we all can agree has happened, it's the perfect innovation opportunity. How do you guys look at that? Because you, got, you want to write to the chips. You want the yeah. chip power. So, so we're doing much, much more to, to engage the open source communities to light up, if you want, for a better term, the instruction sets and all these microprocessors. So we can actually get the maximum power out of them at the minimum sustainable most footprint. So sustainability is a big topic in this area as well. Particularly as you move more and more to the edge because there's a lot more compute that's happening at the edge with the AI uh, and other machine learning uh, innovations that are occurring there. The other thing I think from an open source perspective, which is really important is innovation. You know, so a lot of the things that we talk about, oh it's the edge, innovation's going to be created by software companies and businesses and individuals in the open source communities that's going to drive these applications and services. So really what we're trying to do together is expose a number of those elements for those software uh, innovators to come to the table to look at the next generation of disruptive technologies. 
Well, one of the issues with open source that uh, sort of the, the one of the black eyes recently has been the vulnerability of open source to supply chain attacks. Big initiative from Red Hat being announced this week about software supply chains, and uh, and just sort of the inherent vulnerability of open source projects to to attack. Manufacturers are nervous about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you tell them to reassure them? Really, three things. The first thing is the amount of people looking at open source code is incrementally much more than a proprietary based, traditional based model, so there's a lot more peer review of the code itself. So it's inherently, arguably more secure in that sense, in that you've got more people looking the at it. The big projects, certainly. Yeah, big projects. Second thing is that we're very focused on, certainly from a Red Hat and open source community perspective, we're working with governments to actually certify and endorse and actually secure our underlying platforms in, in that regard. The third thing is, is what we're doing with Intel in terms of yeah, connecting those things from all the way from the silicon all the way up into the application, looking at security as a service. And Christine, you could probably talk more about that. Yeah, yes, we, 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 um, we ensure that we're putting the, you know, the best features into our silicon that can ultimately allow for you know, the trusted boot, the trusted functions running, operating um, in our silicon such that the, the, the assets that the software that Red Hat um, provides helps utilize it, yeah. Talk about the partnership with Red Hat mm -hmm. from your perspective. How's it working? Give some examples of some you know, things you guys done together. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, well, I mean, it's a long standing. <laughs> yeah, we saw, we've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah, well, you know what, I, I, I hit on a little bit earlier. I mean, if you take what we've done together in IT infrastructure, what we've done in the tel telecommunication and bringing those, those, yeah. those capabilities in, now we're bringing that into the edge and, and that intelligent edge and how do you bring that IT functions into a space that frankly has been more of a proprietary kind of yeah. closed system approach and more open it open it up and allow for it. And we have the know-how, we have the capabilities. Now it's just what are the specific things you need to have available in an industrial infrastructure with the lower latency, the more deterministic kinds of operations that you need in those types and of systems. And security too. And security, security, which is foundational to everything we do, yeah. Awesome, well thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it, and congratulations on, on the many, many years of partnerships. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff you can borrow from the old generation, power management, energy, sustainability, but that integration with software, it's now open source, mm. and Intel better together. Yeah, yeah. And, and coupling those things together is what Intel and Red Hat do very yeah. well together. We've been doing it for many, many years, so we're really trying to drive yeah. that next wave of innovation, particularly out to the edge. Yeah, I'm really bullish on the uh, data infrastructure, Paul. You know, the, as a AI shows the, the hype of ChatGPT as ubiquity under the covers, it's a lot of work to be done on performance. Compute, decoupling the observability data, that's a theme we're hearing a lot here Absolutely. at Red Hat. And with Red Hat and Intel, we make it as easy as we possibly can for our developers and the ecosystem to participate. Christine Darrell, thanks for coming on theCUBE, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is theCUBE's coverage. For Paul Gillen, I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. We'll be more coverage day one, two days, Red Hat Summit coverage. We'll be right back. <laughs>